Welcome everyone to another Kerbal Space Program video and this is a special one because this is the very first episode of a brand new series I'm doing called The Stranded. Basically it's a science mode playthrough of Kerbal Space Program so we're going to have to unlock the entire tech tree, do all that good stuff because a lot of people wanted me to do some more kind of career mode, not career mode, science mode, playthroughs, tutorials, that sort of thing but I've already done these sorts of videos before. So I decided to put a little twist on the old formula. Here we are on the overview screen and everything looks pretty normal, right? But if we were to go into the tracking station, it looks like there's something there on Minmus. Let's go take a look. Oh my goodness, there is a stranded Kerbal on Minmus and in fact there is a stranded Kerbal on every single planet and moon in this save file. So I need to unlock the whole tech tree to build rockets that can take me to every corner of the solar system and rescue every single stranded Kerbal and bring them back home. So that's the series, hope it sounds fun, let's roll the title sequence. Now, unfortunately, we can't get to Mimus to rescue the poor stranded Kerbal at the moment because we simply do not have the technology to build that rocket. So we need to grind some science out to unlock the technology, the parts required to build the Minmus rescue rocket. So the first launch is very simple. I've just got this little ship with like the tiny SRB, four mystery goo units. We're just going to do some science from the launch pad, from the air and from the sea. And by science, I mean uh, take a surface sample, when applicable, obviously, do a mystery goo experiment, draw a crew report and do an EVA report. So should get a nice little uh, bird bunch of science points to kickstart our journey into the into the abyss. Now I'm not going to go through every single minute detail when it comes to what I'm doing to unlock the science required to uh, progress through the tech tree because I've done quite a lot of playthroughs of Kerbal Space Program's science mode at this point where I've gone you know, very much much slower, I've explained things a lot more clearly in terms of what I'm doing. So if you want a dedicated tutorial series that um, goes through in slightly more detail than what I'm going to do in The Stranded, uh, then I'd highly recommend you check out my Laun Aerospace the second one playthrough. I'll put a link in the description, there should be a card on screen screen as well. But before I get too ahead of myself, yes, as you can see, we've got a nice bunch of science to unlock a few of the core nodes in the tech tree. I'm going to focus predominantly on the lower tier and the upper tier of the tech tree. Lower tier, that's where all the science units are, which uh, obviously increase the amount of science you can gain from a given mission. And the upper part of the tech tree is rocket parts, which uh, as it might, it might be a shock to you to hear this, but the rocket parts are quite important in Kerbal Space Program, where a game about building rockets, you know. <laughs> And speaking of building rockets, I have built this rocket. And I'd say this is the first real looking rocket, right? The first one I did more resembled the little Joe test units from the early NASA programs. This looks like an actual rocket and it will be going to space. Uh, we're not going to be getting into an orbit. It doesn't have enough Delta V for that. So consider this is like a, uh, this is a, like a recreation of the NASA Mercury Redstone flight that was flown by Alan Shepard, first American to reach outer space. And that's what we're going to be doing. Now the key places we're going to be gathering science from on this flight are the lower atmosphere, the upper atmosphere, and of course space itself. I also launched the rocket from the runway rather than from the launch pad because you can actually gather different science from the launch pad and the runway. I didn't say that very well. You can actually, like, every single area in the Kerbal Space Center counts as its own biome. So, like, you've got the R&D biome, the vehicle assembly biome, the launch pad biome, etc. And a Kerbal can gather a unique surface sample, crew report, mystery goo experiment, etc. from each area. So I like to do at least one launch from the runway and from the launch pad in early game, in early science mode, just to get a little bit of extra science. I took a surface sample of the runway. You'd think they would know, right? Because they built the runway, they'd know what it would be like, but I guess... I guess not. Now a lot of players like taking this to the nth degree by basically building big rolling contraptions and taking Kerbals all over the Kerbal Space Center, harvesting as much science as possible. You can actually get a fairly big chunk of science out of it. But I don't like doing that really. A, because it's really boring and B, it does kind of feel a bit cheaty, right? Like obviously the Kerbals, you would hope, know about the Kerbal Space Center. So it feels a bit weird to harp, use it to grind for science early on in the game. And it doesn't really save that much time in the long run. Like this mission here gets a lot of science and it was very easy and it was fun. I flew a rocket and I, I let go of the rocket by accident. 
So luckily now Jebediah has a parachute. This isn't the end of Jeb. But yeah, the reason I got him out of the capsule in the first place is because in order to take more than one crew report, you have to exit the capsule, right click the capsule, click take data to effectively remove the crew report from the capsule and then get back in and then you can do another one. So in case any of you are wondering why I kept on getting out of the vehicle, taking the data, getting back in the de back getting back in the vehicle and storing it again, that's why. So you can do more than one crew report. And up oh, Almost ended in a disaster for Jeb, but it was all fine. And uh, yeah, a bit of a shame. Everything sort of exploded on re-entry. My plan was that I'd run the mystery goo experiment and, you know, the temperature experiment and the pressure experiment from the desert biome here, but it wasn't to be, really. And I, I didn't worry about it too much. I could have reverted the flight and done it again, but mm, honestly, you don't really get that much science from the surface of Kerbin, so it's not really a big issue. Now... We're going to unlock the Science Junior, and we're also going to unlock a solar panel as well, because a solar panel will be needed for our Odyssey to Minmus. And uh, yeah, we still need a few more parts before we can build the Minmus rocket, though. So our next rocket is going to incorporate the Science Junior, and we're going to be going... We're going to be getting some science with the Science Junior, and this is going to be the final rocket that we need to build that's not going to get us to Minmus and not going to rescue the poor old stranded Kerbal. I wonder who it is up there trying to think. We've got Jebediah, we've got Bill, we've got Valentina, they're all accounted for, and we've got Bob. How can I forget Bob? So I don't know who, I don't know who the Kerbal is. We'll have to just uh, wait and see, I guess. And there we are. Speed run that flight. Yeah, I just took a quick science junior from the launch pad. Then we can just launch the, roll the rocket back out. We could just say that was a static fire attempt or something. We'll roll the rocket back out and do an actual flight now. As for the flight plan itself, it's largely going to be the same as the one we just did, so it's going to be a suborbital trajectory. Uh, really, the only difference is that we're not going to the desert, we're just going to go to the ocean, because... I uh, don't know, that was just where I felt like going. And we're going to use the Science Juniors, that's the main difference with this flight. So we're going to take some science from the lower atmosphere, from the upper atmosphere, and from space, which we've now done. Uh, this part's optional, but I like to just get Jebediah out at this point and just uh, take the data, store it in the capsule, just in case you have a repeat of last time where everything exploded except for the capsule. We still have all that precious data on board. And we can just decouple that lower stage and uh, get ready for a splashdown. And re-entry went pretty well at first, and then I started getting a bit nervous because we pointed downward. And this thing is very aerodynamic, and it got to a pretty high speed. I was worried we'd be going too fast for the parachutes to safely deploy. But luckily, it was all fine. Touchdown, and we can immediately recover. Yes, we are speed running this. Uh, there we are. We can go to research and development. We're going to unlock these fuel tanks here. We're going to just make sure. What else did I get? I think that's the main thing. Get those big fuel tanks. And we need the Terrier engine. That was it. That's what I was trying to get. I was like, what was, what was I trying to grind for before I could get to uh, Mimus? And then I noticed this module here, flight control. It has a two-seat lander can in it, which would be perfect for rescuing a Kerbal. It means we've got capacity for our pilot Kerbal and for the Kerbal that we're going to rescue. I say pilot Kerbal, they are going to pilot the ship, but they're not going to be a pilot. They're going to be a scientist. We're going to take Bob, basically. The reason to take Bob, and I'm sure a lot of you are probably aware of this by now, but just in case, the reason to take Bob over, say, Jebediah, Val, or Bill, is because Bob can use the Science Junior and Mystery Goo experiments an infinite number of times. Normally those experiments are one use and that's it, but a scientist can reset them. So that's what we're going to use Bob so we can grab Science Junior experiment and uh, Mystery Goo experiment data from multiple places throughout the mission. Because while we don't need any more science to rescue the Kerbal from Minmus, we can just go there and grab them, we're going to need some more science to get to all the other places in the Kerbal Space Program solar system. One thing I just want to draw your attention to is for this particular crew capsule, you need to have a separate SAS wheel because it doesn't have any reaction wheels of its own like the uh, like the Mercury style capsule does. And 3, 2, 1, liftoff! Hooray! So there we are, we're going... This is a very momentous day for the stranded aerospace. Probably need a better title than that. It's the first strand type aerospace company. Uh, it's a momentous day because this is not only our first orbital class rocket, but it's also going to be the first time we uh, land a Kerbal on another celestial body. So it's a pretty, pretty ambitious, pretty big mission. And of course, we're going to be rescuing uh, a Kerbal. Don't know how they got stuck up there. Must have been another space agency that put them there. Who knows? I guess, I guess we'll find out who, who it is when we, when we go and see them. It's certainly not one of my Kerbals. 
But there we are. We there we are. We have main engine cut off there. Second stage separation and engine ignition. It's a very small stage. This one is just going to be our circularization stage, and it's going to begin getting us on a transminmus injection. Uh, it's not going to get us all the way there though. So the rest of that burn is going to be done using the lander itself. And yes, of course, this does unfortunately mean that I'm going to be littering. I did not consider the space dolphins or the solar bears for this mission. Uh, it's going to be left stuck. It, it, it's going to be left, stra if you will, stranded in orbit. Maybe I'll do a rescue mission for the for the second stage at some point. Uh, but yeah, just for the sake of efficiency, I just I just dumped it. <laughs> and there we are. It truly is in the past. Now we are on our way. And there we are. So I just need to do a minor mid-course correction burn. Uh, did it the wrong direction initially. So did a quick uh, flip around to anti-normal on the maneuver node. And then I had to burn sort of away from the target as well, just to raise our Minmus periapsis. Minmus is a very lumpy object, has pretty high mountain ranges. So you want to be at a fairly high altitude when orbiting. Anyway, now I'm going to do some science. Uh, you don't get any additional science from being in an orbit versus a suborbital trajectory, so I didn't do any science whilst we were in low Kerbin orbit, but now we are high above Kerbin. We are in space high above Kerbin, which is its own science area, so we can do some science now. And then we can just hop onto the map screen and time warp our way up to Minmus. Oop, oop, oop. Yep, game started freaking out a little bit. I was a bit worried that we weren't going to encounter the minty little satellite, but my worries were quickly dispelled as I saw it loom into view. And uh, yeah, unfortunately at this point I can't make a maneuver node because Bob is not a pilot Kerbal, which means he can't create maneuver nodes unless he has a direct connection to the Kerbal Space Center, which we don't this far away. So I had to just do a quick retrograde burn purely by eye, but it was not very difficult. Minimus's gravity is very low, so it doesn't take a huge amount of delta V or time to circularize. Now I made sure I wasn't on a completely equatorial orbit because our target is not on the equator. So having a tilted orbit, it makes it a bit easier to get to targets that aren't on the equator. I just have to wait until the target is below my orbital line, which it now is. But just before we do the uh, landing burn, I'm just going to do some science from space uh, close to Minmus. I forgot to do it when we first entered Minmus's sphere of influence. So before we, uh, before I leave the sphere of influence, we need to gather some science from space high above Minmus. And there is the poor old stranded Kerbal down there. Now, I'm not going to farm loads of science from Minmus in this mission. I could hop around to another biome. There's a flats biome pretty close by. But just for the sake of keeping this series a little bit spicy, give me things, give me a little bit more to do in each episode, I'm not going to gather the maximum amount of science from each mission. Uh, but there we are. There's the Kerbal. And we've landed. We are at a bit of a slant. The, the Kerbal has not picked the best spot to get stranded. And oh. Maybe, maybe, yeah, the lander can fell over. Luckily, Mimesis surface gravity is very low, so the reaction wheel inside that SAS unit can easily overcome the gravity, so it, we can recover from this. Do not worry. Anyway, let's go and plant our flag, and then see who the Kerbal is. Is, uh, just knocking? Is anyone there? Wait a tick, Marcus, is that you? Hey, hey there, Matt. How you going, buddy? It's, uh, it, <laughs> it is indeed me. I, I'm kind of stuck here, this... but I was trying to do some aerial shots, but just too oh, far yeah? away. Just too far away. <laughs> I just can't get them from here. I don't even know how I got up here. Oh, the old star base, yeah? Yeah. you got to leave that to RGB aerial photography, you know? What can I say? He's the expert. Well, I was trying to compete. I was trying to compete against him, and obviously what? just took it a little too far. Ah, oh, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. Well, if you want, I've got a spare seat in the lander. I've got some Vegemite, I've got some Fosters. You could always jump in. I can take you back. I'm always a fan of both of those things, so <laughs> let's do it. That being said, though, I hate to bring up, you know, the past, but I really ought to leave you here, right? Because do you remember, in August 2017, you stole Mark Thrym's lander from SETI and left his Kerbal stranded there. I had to go rescue him. It doesn't ring a bell at all. I do not Oh, I'm not sure about that. There might well be a card on screen to that little uh, drama. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Get it, get it, get in the lander. I'll take you back. Let's do this. Okay, let's go. I think uh, I think Bob's gathered everything he needs to gather from here. We've planted our flag, got our surface sample, done all of our surface science. Let's just right this baby and get underway. There we are. There's me and Marcus House, that little thumbnail at the bottom right. If you don't know who Marcus House is, he makes lots of great Starbase and Space News content. Every single Saturday, I believe, is his upload schedule with occasional midweek videos as well. So go and check him out. He's actually in my feature box on my channel page. There's also links in the description and I'm sure he's gone and left a good little review in the comment section down below of uh, Laon Aerospace's rescue service 
Uh, no, it's the Stranded, isn't it? We're a Strand-type rescue service. That's it. <laughs> Anyway, here we are just plotting a journey back home to Kerbin. So, didn't do a great job in circularizing, to be honest. I thought the ship was going the other way and we nearly crashed back into the surface, but it was fine. We could just do a prograde burn, get our apoapsis out of Minmus's sphere of influence. Though, just before we leave Minmus's sphere of influence, we need to gather some science so, from space high above Minmus to maximize the science we can get from this mission. We actually have loads of Delta V. We could have totally gone to other biomes on Minmus and got even more more science value out of this mission but alas as I say wanted to try and uh, you know length give me more stuff to do in future episodes by not getting all the science immediately in the first couple of flights I mean in Kerbal Space Program you can unlock the entire tech tree in on just the Mun and Minmus you don't have to you go that far afield and it's a bit more fun to go exploring the solar system not that we really have a choice though because we have to rescue all these Kerbals that have stranded themselves across the solar system. Who will it be next time? We'll have to just wait and see. For now, though, thank you, Marcus, for flying Loud Aerospace. I hope it was a satisfactory rescue service. Oh, mate, that was uh, that was hairy. Thanks for that. Thanks for the ride. Appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> all right, take care of yourself. Yes. Well, there he goes. And there's the science. We got 1,031.5 science units from this mission. Loads of budget to spend on the tech tree. Get some bigger rocket parts for our next rescue mission, wherever that may be. Don't know yet. We'll have to just wait and see where the next SOS signal comes from. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this debut episode of my Stranded series. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And if you liked the video, then dropping a little like down below is always very much appreciated. You can also subscribe to get, you know, Kerbal Space Program content on this channel and Space News content every single Monday. And if you want to go that one step further, like these lovely names on screen did, then you can sign up to my Patreon or join join my channel membership scheme. Links to both can be found down below and a link to Patreon can be found on screen. There are also two other videos from my channel visible there. They're just picked by the YouTube algorithm. So hopefully they're good picks. And yes, I've waffled on far too long now. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.